Well, as you can imagine, that was a hell of a win for us. Uh, I had so much respect for Mark, his team, his program. Um, I got to tell you that uh, played in a lot of great places, but uh, not many better than it was out there tonight. So, to all your fans that were booing me, I uh, give you a little respect because that was a hell of a an atmosphere. Uh, I thought my guys played extremely well. Um, we had some bonehead plays, some bonehead turnovers, and some lapses at times, but uh, I thought in general um, we moved the ball pretty well, we shot the ball pretty well. I said turnovers would be a key. We had some of the dumbest turnovers, but still kept it down to 12. I said rebounding would be a key, and we rebounded it pretty well. And I said not putting them on the line would be a key, and I'm not sure we did as good a job of that these things are so small I can't read them but uh, um, my two freshmen uh, really played extremely well but guys got on the ball you know Rocket did an unbelievable job on on what I think is one of the great players in our league and it's been a privilege to have him in this conference for four years uh, Colin he's a hell of a player and we put two guys on him most of the night Rocket and then we put uh, Aaron Henry on for a little bit more size but those two freshmen, him and uh, Malik Hall, uh, really played well. And Aaron Henry did a lot of great things, too. And so we got more basketball and more people. Questions? Tom, you led for 39 minutes and three seconds. Maryland never had a lead. For you, this season's been a lot of frustration. But to come into this atmosphere tonight and dominate the way you did, you talk about the pride in your guys. Well, I told them that we have to start playing for other people you know it's a very selfish world as we all know it's the Twitter world and uh, and I told them that if you just play for yourself um, it's not rewarding and so I said you gotta pick somebody you know, pick your girlfriend pick your teammate pick the players I hope that played here before you that did such a good job and the really thing I talked to him about is we all know Cassius has been through a lot this year and um, I, I told our guys play for him play for the seniors but for the guys that have built the thing, and you guys are just renting your spot right now. And um, I thought there was a little more fire from the opening get-go, and because of that, uh, I played a very good game against a very, very, very good team. I was going to ask you about that start on both halves. Um, you were able to get out and jump on 9 nothing early, and then the big lead there in the second half. I guess, where do you think that momentum came from with those guys? What, what caused it? Well, I thought Cash pushed the ball. We wanted to run our break. We thought we could run them. And then the second half, we got a lot of offensive rebounds for kickouts. And that's, I think, the two things. Our, our, our fast break, the first part, our offensive rebounding and kickouts for some good threes and good shots was the second part. Uh, we ran a couple things for Xavier where we got him the ball, to call it the short roll, and we got him in the lane. He made some very good decisions. Um, like I said, we, we executed a lot of things well, but made some mistakes that were just unlike us, and uh, I guess I'm being selfish. I don't know, you reference a little bit, but most of this year, you, most nights you know you're getting from Cassius and Xavier, and it feels like those other guys... Most nights I know what I'm getting from Cassius. And, you know, the production you're, you're kind of getting from those guys, but I'm saying all the other guys you have especially Aaron the last couple yeah. of weeks has, has started to be that guy. Your Malik was really big tonight in a lot of ways, Rocket, of course. What has been the difference for those other guys to kind of raise that level the last couple of weeks? Here? Well, I think Aaron realizes he's, he's, he's got to be the butler or Batman or uh, Robin. You know, he's, as I said, we, we've got Batman and we've got Robin and Xavier, and uh, we needed another Robin, and I think that's what he did. But those two freshmen, especially Rocket, um, he's playing so hard defensively that you keep him in a game, and I think it's just the fact that, you know, he missed most of that month of December and, you know, he's doing what freshmen do, you know, it's, it's a process, you get better and he he was better. He played so hard that uh, I think he brings some energy to the rest of our team and a little bit of toughness, you know, and that's what I, you know, kids from Detroit and I keep telling them, man, you got to represent, you know, Steve Smith will be disappointed, you got to represent that place and that's blue collar town, tough town, and he's a tough kid, and that's that's been a big part of it. 
Tom, after how things went a couple of weeks ago, went to them at your place, how, how encouraging was you to see some of the answers that they had when, when Malin went on run, you guys didn't build Yeah, shot. you know, I, I thought we did. I mean, I thought we, we turned it over a little bit when we should have and made some push-offs and that. It would look like frustration. I think fatigue was part of it. But that's one of the things we put on the board for the game. Let's play 40 minutes, not 37. You know, we played 37. In fact, we played 37 a lot of times this year and haven't found a way to win. And Maryland, on the other hand, has been in some tough games but found a way to win. And that's what championship teams do. And they're still in the driver's seat, deserve to be in the driver's seat because they've got a very good team. They're very well coached. And, and those their two superstars are really good players, you know, Colin and Smith. And uh, some of their other guys missed some shots that I think they normally hit. Some of our guys... Uh, Turned it over that we normally didn't, so I guess it evens out in the end. But uh, I was very pleased and proud of how we did compete. You wanted to be a little bit better defensively, so being able to limit them, hold them to just six threes, as well as uh, Colin had, he was six of 15. So just how impressed were you, were you with how you were able to play defense today? Well, you know, we are the number one defensive team in the conference, both from the three and from the two, I believe. And uh, we're second in rebounding, so that is still how we... We hang our hat on that. Um, when you do rebound well, you run your fast break, and I think we've got a very good fast break, and um, you got to rebound to do it. So I was, I was pleased that we, we didn't ever really slow down. You know, they came at us, and like a good team they are does. And you know, right before the half, we could have uh, folded a little bit. They got it to 22-22. I don't know if they went ahead. Maybe not. And then it was an unbelievable design, 75-foot uh, play that we put in this last week. It was unbelievable. And so that's coaching, fellows. That's coaching. Uh, the, the, you're now a game back. Um, you, you mentioned about them still being in the driver's seat. I guess from where you're at right now with two to go, how do you approach this to the guys? You know, I said the other night when they, when both them and Penn State, you know, kind of lucked out to win, and we had a lot of people around our office that was upset. I wasn't upset at all. You know, we've had our chances to do something. I said, if we go to Maryland and beat them, and then we can go to Penn State and beat them, then maybe we deserve for something to happen. But if we couldn't do that, you know, let's move on to the Big Ten tournament, you know. And uh, so I don't know now, you know, Penn State, we got to go there. Um, I think, you know, we've played so many ranked teams here in the last six, seven games. Uh, but it'll be good. We're, you know, that game that came down to a, you know, missed a free throw with 17 seconds left to tie it. So I think our guys believe we can play with anybody, but we still got a lot of work to do to clean up. Got a little sloppy, and we got to clean those things up. Just to follow up on the defense, uh, with, with how relying on the three Maryland is, just how big of a luxury is it for you to be able to have single coverage, Xavier on, on Smith and just basically put Rocket on Cal and not have to cheat, not have to help, not have to do anything. That, that is very true, and we made sure Rocket wasn't going to give up those threes that he gave up last game. But I will say this, and the only guy that, you know, Cassius has, you know, has had a lot of things he's gone through. But Xavier Tillman, um, when I see that, some people haven't talked about him as the defensive player of the year. I, I promise you he's the best defender in this league. I mean, you can cover a guy like that one-on-one. -on -one. You can cover a guy that we just covered from Iowa one-on-one. -on -one. I think those are two of the best big men. And we very little doubled on either guy. And so Tillman, you know, I can't believe he's not everybody's choice for that. And I'm not politic and I'm just leveling with you. But that is a luxury. And then with Rocket, you know, we don't really have to He's so athletic and he's tough. And uh, I mean, still, what's name got around him some because he's a great player. But I thought we did a hell of a job of covering those two guys and not have to expose ourselves by doubling and doing different things. We've got time for a couple more. About the month of March. I know it's February 29th, leap day, so we'll call it March. But what is it about March where your team seems to hit their stride every year? You know, people ask me that, um, and trust me, I'm. That means I'm a really bad coach in November, December, January, and February, if you ask me. So when people say that, I almost get offended. Like, you know, but, but I do, I, I've always believed that there's a process to everything, you know, and that's why we play such a tough schedule early. I mean, the eight Final Fours we've been in, we probably had the most losses in most of them because we go get our brains beat in, 
the players aren't as cocky. They listen a little more. And then we, you know, we build. And this year's been so many monkey wrenches that have been thrown in with either injuries or, you know, the incredible thing that happened with Cash that uh, it's been different. But, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you tougher. And we've kind of sustained and we've kind of worked on it. You know, we spend a lot of time. And a win like this can help you. But we got, like I said, there was enough sloppiness at the end, too. And, and, and Maryland didn't play. I mean, when they missed three free throws in a row, and they just did not play as good as they've been playing. They've been the most consistent team, and not only in our league, but one of the most consistent teams in the country. And uh, so tonight was our night. David. Tom, Maryland's trying to get in the big, in this conference where you've been for two decades. It, wow. What's the, what's the toughest part about sustaining this thing year in and year out and always trying to be at the top of the conference? You know, I talked to Gary Williams last night and I talked to him tonight at the game a little bit. And, you know, it is really hard. I got a lot of friends. When you change conferences, especially at this level, you know, a lot of mid levels change and, the American to this, to that. It's difficult enough as like Wichita State has found out, you know. But when you're changing from the ACC to the Big Ten to major conferences, you know, there's just so many things. I mean, he's done a hell of a job. When you look at all the things you got to adjust to, you know, where the hotels are, where's the airport, you know. I mean, we got to come one place. He's got to go to 12, 13 different ones. And sustaining, it just takes, uh, I think, building a culture. And you, you don't do that in two years or three years. I mean, He's starting to build it, though. He's got a hell of a culture. He's got good players. He's got some good young players. Um, they're going to miss Colin because he's the straw that stirs the drink, man. He does not get rattled at our place. He was unbelievable um, without even being flashy, just solid. But he's got a good base here, and uh, I think consistency comes with the culture you build. And if you build a good culture and you hang your hat on something. We've hung our hat on our defense. We've hung our hat on our rebounding. This year we're not as good a rebounding team, but we're still second in the league, but not as good as the plus 14s and 15 back in the heydays. But we're cruising around at a plus six and ham and egging it through, you know, a little bit. But it's, I, I think the one thing that I really pushed the last week, um, and thank God the guys like Cleves and even uh, Draymond said it when he was here, uh, month ago and uh, Steve Smith you know we haven't been as tough David as we've normally been I mean we have you know, one time they called us a football team on Hardwood and I thought that was a compliment but we're a little softer now it's I don't know if it's part of the makeup of the new millennials I don't know if it's part of bad recruiting I don't know if it's part of but we've gotten a little tougher the last couple games I mean got Malik Hall in there now freshman rebounding his tail off we got Rocket in there getting after it. Xavier's always been a pretty tough kid, so as we get tougher, players play tough, players win. I've said that my 25-year career hasn't changed any. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.